Welcome to the training module on introducing OMAP-L138-AM1808 processor architect and Hawkboard peripherals. This training module will introduce Texas Instruments OMAP-L138-AM1808 processor architecture and Hawkboard peripherals. The OMAP-L138 is a low-power applications processor based on a ARM 926EJ-S and a C674X DSP core. The dual core architect of the device provides benefits of both DSP and reduced instruction set computer technologies. Incorporating a high performance TMS320C 674X DSP core and a ARM 926EJ-S core. The C674X DSP combines the performance of the C64X Plus core with the floating point capabilities and provides the extended precision necessary for a high precision logarithms on a variety of signed and unsigned 32-bit data types. The peripheral set includes an Ethernet MAC 1 USB 2.0 OTG interface, 1 USB 1.1 OHCI interface, 2 inter-integrated circuits, 1 multi-channel audio serial port, 2 multi-channel buffered serial ports, 2 SPI interfaces, 4 64-bit general purpose timers each configurable one configurable as watchdog, a configurable 16-bit host port interface, up to nine banks of 16 pins of general purpose IL, three UART interfaces, two enhanced high-resolution pulse width modulator peripherals, and three 32-bit enhanced capture module peripherals, the rich peripheral set provides the ability to control external peripheral devices and communicate with external processors. The PRU real-time subsystem is a collection of two RISC cores, each with its own instruction and data memory and fast I.O. The risk cores of the PRUSS run at half the ARM slash DSP clock frequency and have access to other SOC resources, example external memory, peripheral registers, system DMA, etc. The PRUSS is fully programmable and can be used to add differentiation to customer products. The PRUSS is well equipped to perform embedded tasks that require manipulation of packed memory map data structures. It can also efficiently handle system events that have tight real-time constraints. The PRUSS consists of the following blocks. Two independent 32-bit RISC processors, each with 4K of instruction RAM and 5 12 bytes of data RAM, an interrupt controller for system event handling, and an I.O. interface with up to 30 input pins and 32 output pins per PRU core on the AM18X. The AM17X PRU does not support I.O. pins, but can still be used for a variety of purposes such as custom data movement schemes, custom timers, etc. Note that although PRU can only run from its dedicated instruction RAM, 
it can be reset and new code can be loaded. This allows the use for the PRU for multiple functions. The PRUSS provides several benefits. It can be used to extend connectivity and enhance peripheral capabilities on AM1X devices. Customers can implement special peripherals, example 9-bit UART, and bus interfaces. The PRU can also be used to implement smart data movement schemes, example circular DMA. The PRUSS can also be used as a smart power controller, allowing you to turn switch off the clock and the arm, only waking up the core when specific events are detected. The PRUSS can be used to offload data handling tasks from the arm, freeing up those cores for other tasks. The fully programmability of the PRU allows customers to implement custom interface. Now let's look at the rich peripheral set. The universal parallel port peripheral is a multi-channel, high-speed parallel interface with dedicated data lines and minimal control signals. It is designed to interface cleanly with high-speed analog to digital converters or digital to analog converters with up to 16-bit data width per channel. It may also be interconnected with field programmable gate arrays or other UPP devices to achieve high-speed digital data transfer. It can operate in receive mode, transmit mode, or duplex mode in which its individual channels operate in opposite directions. The UPP peripheral includes an internal DMA controller to maximize throughput and minimize CPU overhead during high-speed data transmission. All UPP transmissions use the internal DMA to feed data to or retrieve data from the I.O. channels. The DMA controller includes two DMA channels which typically service separate I.O. channels. The UPP peripheral allows supports data interleave mode in which all DMA resources services a single I.O. channel. In this mode, only one I.O. channel may be used. Maximum clock is one quarter of the CPU clock. Each channel can access 16 data signals. These signals are allocated to the channels dependent on the mode of the UPP. The throughput data shown are about 80% of the maximum theoretical throughput to account for the other system traffic. The UPP is pin multiplex with the video port input, HPI, PRU subsystems, EMAC, RM2, and LCD interface, but since pin muxing is programmable on a per pin basis, many configurations are possible to support several of these peripherals at once. Parallel ATA design throughput has maximum data transfer at 130 megabits per second and was unable to increase transmission rate due to hardware limitations. This limitation birthed the SATA or SATA. SATA has lower pin count, operates at a much lower signal level, which is 50 milliwatts peak to peak, and a scalable frequency, scalable width frequency. Generation 3 is now delivering 6 gigabits per second of raw bandwidth. SATA uses two bidirectional differential data lines. While one is being used to transmit data and the other being used for transmitting status, so the 1.5 gigabit per second 
and 3 gigabit per second of throughput is the throughput on the transmitted differential data line only. Differential data lines make design more robust, making it immune from noise and less acceptable to EMI. No skew issues exist as when you have a single data line. Lower pin counts implies lower complexity of board design and lower cost. The 8B slash 10B encoding increases the size of the data by 25% since an 8-bit data is encoded to a 10-bit data prior to transmission. This allows for a sufficient 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 transition in the bit stream allowing for clock recovery and eliminating a high frequency clock signal. Reliability and performance comes with the, with the price tag. Also, 8B slash 10B encoding scheme makes use of the running disparity scheme. Example maintains the balance of ones and zeros transmitted or DC balanced. Running disparity protocol also has transmission error capability. Errors introduced on the bus altering disparity would be identified. Legacy mode is not supported. Example does not have shadow tasks, file registers, and command processing is performed based on AHCI operation. AHCI makes use of the data structures and frame information structure. However, AHCI maintains the software compatibility with legacy software and complies with the ATA, ATAPI-7, and PAT command instruction specifications. NCQ allows device to execute commands not only out of order but also execute commands partially minimizing excess latency. HW, ex exists, ex HW assist allows the device to control the onboard SATA controller DMA to fetch data from the AM18X memory. A port multiplier allows up to 15 devices to be attached to a single HBA port and the SATA controller has the H slash W support to enable that. In SD mode, 1 bit and 4 bit data buses are supported, as is SDHC, which is class 2, 4, 6 cards ranging from 4 gig to 32 gig, having verified up to 37.5 megahertz. In MMC mode, 1-bit, 4-bit, and 8-bit buses have been verified up to 26 megahertz. This peripheral should also support 1 and 4-wire SD cards and SDHC, but these configurations shall not have been confirmed by TI. The EMIFA is one of the two memory interfaces on AM1X devices. The EMIFA is used to interface with external memory devices such as SDR, SDRAM, ASRAM, NAND flash, or NOR flash. The CPU, EDMA, and other master peripherals use the EMIFA to access data in external memory. The EMIFA can interface with up to 120 megabytes of single data rate SDRAM over a 16-bit bus. Configurable CAS latencies and memory timings allow for the EMIFA to support a wide range of SDRAM devices. Through its, synchronous, through its asynchronous interface, the EMIFA can also connect 
without glue logic to memory devices like SRAM, NAND flash, NOR flash, as well as ASIC and FPGAs. The EMIFA supports both 8 and 16-bit devices and its programmable cycle timings allows for a wide range of memory devices to be supported. For 8 and 16-bit NAND flash, the EMIFA supports 1-bit and 4-bit ECC. The DDR2 slash MDDR controller is one of two memory interfaces on the AM18X device. The DDR2 slash MDDR controller is used to interface with DDR2 and MDDR SDRAM devices. The CPU, EDMA, and other master peripherals use the DDR2 slash MDDR controller to access data and instructions in external memory. The DDR2 slash MDDR controller can interface with up to 512 megabytes of double data rate SDRAM over 32-bit bus. Configurable CAS latencies and memory timings allow the DDR2 slash MDDR controller to support a wide range of DDR SDRAM devices. The EMAC module on AM1X supports the standard RM2 interface to connect with Ethernet. The M2 interface is available on AM18X only and only one EMAC interface can be enabled at a time because there is only one physical EMAC module. Both 10 and 100 um, megabits per second speeds are supported at full and half duplex mode. A local CPPI memory is included to store EMAC pack descriptors. When connected to the multiport switch, the VLAN tag supports allows the EMAC to discriminate between multiple virtual networks. A Clause 22 MDIO interface is included to handle the configuration and management of connected Ethernet files. Aside from the intended purpose of the interfacing with Ethernet files, the EMAC module can also be used to enable communications between embedded processors that also have EMAC interfaces. This application is not officially supported. USB 2.0 has built-in PHY with UTMI interface. It supports all three speeds slash devices via the 2.0 hub when operating as a host. As a host, it supports a multi-point setup where multiple devices are connected via a hub. It has dedicated hardware USB underscore drive bus that is directly controlled by the USB controller. Then enable slash disable external power logic, which is the charge pump. Inputs one and four, inputs one to four are called, are all capable of handling all of the four transfers. Endpoint zero is serviced via CPU only. EPs 1 to 4 are serviced via the CPU as well as DMA. A 4 kilobyte of FIFO RAM is available for user software to configure as a application desired. DMA makes use of the descriptors and multiple queues, easing the use of scatter gather function functionality and allowing multiple transactions to be queued. Without a support of Q, only a single transfer can be handled one at a time, which is a burden for a busy CPU.
USB 1.1 is an OHCI controller with an internal PHY. It supports both full speed and low speed in host mode only. Realistically, a 50 megahertz pixel clock is supported across operating modes. The memory bandwidth has been successfully stress tested with a continuous 75 megahertz pixel clock where the concurrent activity is managed with priority settings. However, the data sheet spec for the max pixel clock frequency is the current performance limiter. TI is evaluating whether this spec can be raised. There is a wiki article, LCDC throughput performance, and here's the link listed. The enhanced resolution pulse width modulators can effectively generate complex pulse width waveforms with minimal CPU overhead and intervention. There are three enhanced high resolution pulse width modulators available on the AM1707 and two enhanced high resolution pulse width modulators on the AM1808. The enhanced capture mode is essential in systems where accurate timing and external events are important. Some of the uses for the enhanced capture mode in mod module includes sample rate measurements of audio input, speed measurements of rotating machinery, for example, tooth sprocketed sensed via hall sensors, elapsed time measurements between physician sensor pulses, period and duty cycle measurements of pulse train signals, and decoding current or voltage amplitude derived from duty cycle encoded current slash voltage sensors. The host port, the host port interface provides a memory-like interface where an external host can gain access to the memory inside the AM1X. This can be used for boot purposes or to exchange data in multiprocessor systems. The interface is similar to asynchronous memory. The multi-channel audio serial port is designed for audio applications. Each multi-channel audio serial port module is highly configurable for format such as data size and alignment, and supports multiple streams of synchronous serial data. Thus, multi multiple channels of audio can be transported simultaneously. AM1X includes a multi-channel audio serial port, data FIFOs that are designed to relax real-time requirements. EDMA is the recommended resource to service multi-channel audio serial port. Aside from the standard audio application, it is possible to retask the multi-channel audio serial port for other functions such as generating arbitrary waveforms at slow frequencies. For example, the multi-channel audio serial port can be configured to operate at 50 megahertz with a single 32-bit slot with this setup, a 1.56 megahertz square wave can be created with 20 nanoseconds of resolution for modifying the pulse width. This application is not fully supported. The multi-channel buffer serial port is designed to interface to a variety of serial industry standard devices. Receive and transmit are fully independent and have flexible programmability of clock, phase, and frame behavior. The multi-channel buffered serial port can work with TDM data streams 
up to 128 channels. AM18X includes multi-channel buffer serial port data FIFOs that are designed to relax real-time requirements by making the port less sensitive to DMA latency. The serial port interface is a synchronous serial I.O. port that enables interfacing with external microcontrollers and electrically erasable EEPROMs. It can also be used to configure ADCs, DACs, display drivers, shift registers, and etc. Multiple serial port interface modes are supported, like 3-pin, 4-pin, with chip select, 4-pin with an enable, and 5-pin. The serial port interface can be a master or slave. The UART is used to interface the peripheral devices or, mo uh, mo or modems. The UART supports auto flow control signals, which are clear to, clear to send and ready to receive, as well as modem control functions, DSR, DTR, RI, and DCD. Through this frequency prescaler, multiple bar rates can be supported, including 9600, 14, uh, 14,400, 92 to 19,200, 38,400, 57,600, and 115,200. The URID also supports 13x and 16x oversampling. I squared 2 modules also allows AM1X to communicate with other board components using a two-pin shared bus in both master and slave configurations. The I2C specification is supported by a large number of manufacturers for common interoperability. The general purpose I.O. peripheral provides dedicated general purpose pins that can be configured as either inputs or outputs. In addition, the GPIO peripheral can produce CPU interrupts and EDMA events in different interrupt slash event generation mode. The device has 64-bit general purpose timers that can be used to time events, count events, generate pulses, interrupt the CPU, and send synchronization events to the DMA. It has an interrupt slash event enabler slash status register, re reset timer mode to reset the timer count when the counter registers are read reload registers to automatically update the period register and reset the timer counter when the initial timeout period has reached. Capture registers to record and counter value of the timer upon the timeout or external event. Eight compare registers with individual interrupts that trigger when the counter matches the compared value. Now let's look at the development to Hawkboard. The Hawkboard is an open source community board that was developed by an external vendor using the OMAP-L138 processor. It's intended to showcase the performance of the high precision floating point DSP with the flexibility of a ARM9 processor in the ultra-low-cost development environment. This development platform has all the basic components needed for full feature development and is supported totally by the Hawkboard community at www.hawkboard.org.
a brand new product, the XDS100 V2, is a very inexpensive JTAG emulator solution. For less than $80, you get the capabilities to interact and control the AM1X. This emulator is powered by the works using USB and is available from the Spectrum Digital and Blackhawk. TI makes the design files available to you. You can even build your own. If you have the board space available, one idea is to design this down onto your, your own product as a debugging section for development purposes. The XDS100 V2 only works with the CCS4 or later. For additional information, you can go to the wiki page shown here.